Hello everybody, I am Dr. Chaitanya Darshan. So I will be uh, talking about pediatrics part. Uh, the pediatrics part which is important in the entrance examination. In Nepali entrance examination, uh, the pediatric contributes in C examination 12 marks. So uh, it's important, very important to uh, prepare uh, to uh, pediatrics parts. So in pediatrics parts, uh, today we'll discuss about the renal system. Before starting renal system, the embryology, the renal embryology is very important. Let's talk about the renal embryology. So uh, basically, the uh, the renal system, which is uh, derived from the metanephros, the metanephros, which is uh, derived from the intermediate mesoderm. So uh, the metanephros, which gives two part, one is called as uh, metanephric blastema or uh, metanephric mesoderm. The another part is called as uh, ureteric bodies. The metanephric uh, mesoderm or this metanephric blastema, which forms the uh, the excretory unit of the kidney as you know uh, the excretory unit of the kidney which consists of the major part of a nephros glomerulus pct loop of henley and dct and the another part uh, this diagram i just talk about this diagram the three part developing part developing part for kidney this pronephros mesonephros and metanephros we talk uh, we just talk about metanephros which form two part uh, the uh, one is the uh, metanephric blastema, another is ureteric board. So, ureteric board. So, ureteric board basically, which is formed from the mesonephric duct, which is from the collecting part of the kidney. As you know, the collecting part of the kidney, which are pelvis, calyces, and collecting tubules. So, uh, there, there is another important fact which may ask in the examination the uh, a neonatal kidney achieve the concentrating ability equivalent to adult by the one years this is uh, important part the a neonat uh, can concentrate urine up to maximum of the 700 to 800 milliosmol per kg but dilute urine up to 50 milliosmol per kg this is uh, basically the fact uh, you should memorize Sometimes they may ask an uh, examination. So uh, renal agenesis. Uh, this is uh, important part uh, on the developmental part. Uh, immediately after uh, delivering the baby, uh, the, you should uh, examine after uh, cutting, clamping and cutting the cord. You should uh, examine the uh, the umbilical uh, cord. So in umbilical cord, there are two renal artery and one renal vein. If you uh, if you get their one renal artery, you should suspect renal agenesis. So, uh, the uh, renal agenesis uh, generally associated with the single umbilical artery, uh, which is may associated with the bilateral renal agenesis or Porter syndrome. The Porter syndrome, this is the important term they may use in the uh, the questions which consist of the pulmonary hypoplasia oligohydromenous twisted face extremities defect and renal failure these are the uh, uh, these are the contents on the uh, porter syndrome the diagram shows the typical porter syndrome the face part if you go the face part which is twisted face the pulmonary part which is uh, pulmonary hypoplasia uh, in the lungs and the oligohydromenus is, uh, is uh, during the intrauterine period and the extremity defect this claw feet or board leg this extremity defect uh, in the baby and the renal failure renal failure may present with the uh, porter syndrome so uh, let's talk about three entities which are developmental abnormalities so one is the multicystic renal dysplasia another is polycystic kidney disease and another is the medullary response kidney disease uh, in uh, questions uh, they may put the clinical vignettes and the findings by the findings uh, uh, you can differentiate the the congenital anomaly so let's uh, go through the findings so basically on gross finding and microscopic finding uh, if you uh, look in the multiple uh, multicystic renal dysplasia or multicystic dysplasia the cysts are varying in size they do not communicate but the polycystic kidney these uh, both kidney are markedly enlarged uh, 
and this was the innumerable cysts radiating from the medulla to the cortex. And in the uh, medullary sponge kidney, the, there is arrangement of the cyst uh, where the changes occur in the tubules or tiny tubules in the this medullary sponge kidney. Okay, so the functioning uh, functions of the kidney. If say kidney is totally dysfunction, you just stick uh, on the multi cystic renal dysplasia. If functioning kidney, you have two differential like either polycystic kidney disease or medullary sponge kidney disease. Okay, so if involvement is unilateral, then you just stick unilateral multi cystic renal dysplasia. If bilateral involvement, you have a two differential like either polycystic kidney disease or medullary response kidney disease. The inherited pattern uh, that can lead uh, us to differentiate uh, these three entities. Uh, on this multicystic, uh, multicystic renal dysplasia, the most common cause of uh, abnormal mass in the neonate. And this is non inheritance, it has no inheritance, it is genetic non inherited uh, multicystic renal dysplasia. But the polycystic kidney, it could be either autosomal dominant or it could be the uh, autosomal recessive. So, we will talk uh, later on the uh, both autosomal dominant and recessive patterns. And medullary sponge kidney, this is uh, basically the developmental disorder, it has also uh, not, it has no uh, the inheritance pattern. So this diagram, you if you go through the diagram, the first diagram we shows the renal cystic dysplasia, and second diagram we shows the this medullary sponge kidney disease, which has a radiating pattern, and the, in this uh, third C diagram we shows the adult polycystic kidney uh, disease, and the uh, D diagram we shows the infantile type of polycystic kidney disease. So. Let's differentiate the uh, more focus on the polycystic kidney disease. So it could be either uh, we just talk, uh, talk like it could be the autosomal dominant or recessive. So if uh, it is uh, the adult type, it could be on adult type or this infantile type. If uh, the clinical vignette gives adult type, you just stick this is the autosomal dominant. If it is infantile type, it's autosomal recessive. Gene, it genes uh, basically if in adult type, either PKD as 1 or PD, P, PKD as 2 gene, both can be defected on uh, its uh, in adult type. But in the, the uh, infantile type, PKD as 1 gene is defect. So the cyst. Uh, by the type of cyst we can differentiate, uh, differentiate. like if it is a polycystic kidney disease adult type there is macro cyst but if it is infantile it is micro cyst. So um, by this uh, differentiating feature you can differentiate adult or the infantile type polycystic kidney disease. Okay, okay students uh, let's go uh, through uh, detail more detail autosomal recessive polycystic kidney which is more common in the uh, the infantile group. So it is issued with the maternal oligohydrominus we just take out, uh, talk about the Porter uh, syndrome which has uh, the all the amyloid like renal pulmonary and it may also issue with the hepatic cyst and fibrosis. It has bilaterally bilateral duct uh, atresia and both kidney are markedly enlarged and showing the innumerable uh, cysts radiating from the medulla to cortex. So innumerable cyst which is radiating from uh, the medulla medullary part to cortex. So uh, if you perform the MRI of kidney which shows the, the fusiform dilated collecting ducts and uh, prenatal USC uh, if you do if you uh, done the prenatal USC we show the salt and paper appearance the radial appearance on the USC prenatal USC uh, this uh, sometime uh, give on the question the salt and paper uh, appearance um, by this uh, feature you can tick like it is autosomal recessive so um, Another abnormality uh, the, which is medullary response kidney disease. This cyst is the terminal, uh, basically terminal parts, the collecting duct and it is a medullary and the most common is uh, which uh, is called it for the recurrent stone former and this is basically asymptomatic and the if you perform uh, intravenous uh, pyelography, the paint brush appearance, this is typical of this medullary response kidney. And, uh, sometimes they put this on the clinical vignettes. Uh, if you get like pain brush appearance, you just go directly tick on the medullary response kidney disease. 
so uh, we just complete the uh, immunological logical part uh, and we'll talk more on the unit track infection which is an important topic on the uh, renal part uh, they must ask questions from this uh, the uh, urinary tract infection so the uh, the urinary tract infection which is most common in the generally we uh, in adult part the female is most commonly uh, um, uh, female are most commonly involved uh, uh, involved i mean uh, female are more prone to uti than the male but the question is infant if they give infant you should take male the ratio is the uh, 3 to 5 is to 1 Patient. So, if they give an infant, you just take male. Otherwise, after one year, the female is, as you know, female is uh, more predisposed for the urinary tract infection. The clinical features of UTI which uh, consist of pyelonephritis, cystitis, and asymptomatic, asymptomatic bacteriuria. The pyelonephritis basically the uh, the appearance and presentation of the child or adult which have the toxic uh, symptoms like high grade fever, flying pain, and nausea, vomiting anal distension uh, they may present with the the toxic type of the feature toxic symptoms like uh, high grade fever pain and nausea vomiting if cystitis like uh, if cystitis they uh, may present with the dysuria urgency frequency and incontinence and suprapubic pain and malodorous urine so sometimes the uti may present asymptomatically like which uh, we can uh, classify as a asymptomatic bacteria the positive urine culture but without symptoms okay so diagnosis diagnosis is uh, yeah, very important on the uti so uh, for the uh, symptoms or finding of urine analysis urine culture is necessary for the diagnosis definitely diagnosis is the urine culture so uh, for sample uh, the, which is important uh, plays a vital uh, important role on the diagnosis uh, the sample collecting part the in uh, older children the midstream urine sample is sufficient but in pen less than one year the if they said best method then you take suprapubic uh, aspiration uh, is the best method for the urine sample collection so uh, specimen for blood culture uh, sorry urine culture so microscopy analysis shows the if uh, microscopy of urine analysis was more than 5 wbc high power field it is not confirmatory but the you can suspect there is infection urinary infection uh, for uh, uh, moreover the deep stick test for nitrate or leukocyte storage can be added further uh, added on the diagnosis of uti but the specific WBC cars are specific for the pilot. If WBC cars is present in urine, you which is specific for the this pilot nephritis. So uh, urine culture uh, uh, we shows uh, the uh, uh, more than um, ten to the five colonies per ml uh, with or without symptoms, or more than ten thousand colonies per ml in the symptomatic patient. Then you can diagnose as a UTI. Uh, basically cystourethrogram in a male child more than one year uh, UTI episodes and female child with um, uh, UTI uh, episode within a six month the basically cystourethrogram MC, MCUG they, there is another protocol for the uh, uh, to whom we have to perform uh, the basically cystourethrogram I will talk on later part so treatment basically the antibiotic is a definite treatment for the uti but cotimoxazole uh, we can uh, treat for the, uh, the uncomplicated uti but for in the case of the complicated uti you should go the cephalosporin third generation cephalosporin uh, cephalosporin which is the good choice first choice of the treatment for the complicated uti by uh, this uh, we just finished uh, two part of the renal system first is we just take uh, talk about the the immunology part and second on UTI on, on further we will uh, we'll